Hey, my community, Jeff here again. Another one of my A to Z's of Christian rock. Briefly again, if you haven't caught one of these before, we're looking at stuff I have in my vinyl collection that would be categorized, either marketed by, or as is pretty evidently considered Christian rock, as they would say, um, which is mainly just music that has a different lyrical style um, that has, you know, a different worldview in the lyrical style than, than bands who don't necessarily. So anyway, this is uh, the letter M. There's quite a few of them. I'm going to go real fast for these. But uh, anyway, hopefully you enjoy these. We are in the letter M. And again, there's only one in here that's kind of one of those ones that falls into that gray area. We'll talk about that when we get there. First up, Magdalene. I've talked about this album in the past. This is a great, it's kind of like a super group. You got Ken Tamplin on vocals. Probably does some guitar work too. He's some shout. Um, he's done a lot of solo stuff, great stuff. I mentioned him in the Jace video, J video, because he was the one I spoke about in the uh, Joshua band that was originally, eventually, was originally the album, eventually removed, and then half of the band from Joshua went and formed Shout. Anyway, Shout did a few albums, great stuff. Ken Tamplin got up with Lanny Cordola, Lanny Cordola from House of Blues and a bunch of other projects, and they did this album. Um, blum, 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 um, who else was on here? Ken Mary on drums, one of my favorite drummers of all times. Lanny Cordola, Ken, yeah, um, anyway, it is a great album, great, great melodic, straight up anthemic type melodic, great album, just pro to the core one of the greatest albums the band did go on to do a couple other albums by the name magdalene they took out one of the l's changed singers um had some other musician changes became kind of bluesier at time but they did do some other albums but only that one has been on vinyl um, and then we got mainline riders this is a real recent reissue that uh, i picked up not too many months ago um the band has done a couple albums this is going to be straight up rock and roll um, at times, it harkens to a little bit of an ACDC feel, uh, early ACDC type stuff. Um, Cliffy from this band has done a lot of remastering and reprodu re, you know, producing lots and lots of great music over the years. And then there are a couple mainline writer albums that it came out. And this is the only one that I believe has been reissued on vinyl at this time. Malachi, Under the Blade. This album was recently reissued. This was an album that came out back in the day that was on vinyl. And I had it back in the 80s. And it's very expensive if you find one nowadays. So this was reissued recently by Rox Records. And so that was great. They, you know, remastered it, reissued that. This is the original Red Sunrise that uh, the, the followed up that EP with this album. Basically, all most all the songs from that EP were on this album. When they have a new keyboard player, it became quite a... Uh, different version of it one's kind of a raw uh, de demo type thing and then one of them is a more of a polished album but very uh, commercial sounding um, so yeah great stuff early california band mastodon john elefante and his brother dino elefante are the masterminds behind this the band has a lot of different singers including john john elefante of course spent some time in kansas uh, play the game tonight one of the big MTV hits back in the day that he sang on he had a couple of those albums in the early 80s love his stuff uh, Macedon has like I said it was kind of a not really super good but they had all kinds of music musicians play on their I mean, bands not just that categorized in the Christian thing there was people from REO Speedwagon and stuff a lot of musicians but uh, this one has a lot of different singers and fun stuff and uh, it's really great this is like I love this album this was recently reissued on vinyl and then they had a second album La Cardio again more of the same and then many many years later just a couple years ago they came up with uh, volume three with John Elefante. A little different sound, but I mean, you know, not really. It's just uh, a kind of a, a new modern take um, on the sound from back in the 80s and 90s they did. All right, Messiah. This was a obscure band that I don't know if they've necessarily classified themselves as a Christian band. They have a lot of lyrics like that. This was in the 84... This was reissued by Cult Classic Records overseas, so um, not a Christian label, but they did reissue it because it is a classic, and it's very hard to find the original vinyl from back in the days. It's very expensive. So these were reissued not too long ago, and the band did do a second album, Messiah, and that also was reissued on vinyl. Great stuff. Another one that came out with last year, Mercy Rule. 
one of the one-off obscure Christian metal bands from back in the day that they were on a compilation or two, and then they put out this album, and that's about all we heard from them. So this was reissued recently. A lot of people didn't really like this album back in the day. There's a lot of love them, hate them type stuff going on there. I kind of dug it, but then again, I dug a lot of this stuff back in the day, you know, whether it was all on the same par or not. And I liked that album and was glad to see that come out. All right, M Melodic Passion is just another of the many albums that uh, Christian Lug Lugdren uh, has put out. He is a singer from Narnia. He sings a lot of different projects. Fire, uh, Flames of Fire is a new one he's got. This is just like a solo type album he did. And one of those Swedish singers who appears all over the place. And this was an album he did a couple years ago. All right. One of the earliest of Christian rockers pre... I mean, these guys were like pre-Striper breaking... So, and again, this was one of the bands that when I first got into Christian music in 85, uh, they were one of the few bands that uh, existed at the time. And so this was Rock the Flock, and this was their first album, and then they did get picked up by Pure Metal Records, which is the label that ultimately went on to do most of the Christian metal stuff in a day uh, with Master of the Metal. So, um, you know, that's about all they, they did a third album that was a different lineup. It was kind of a, the band kind of shifted around after that, but this was the, uh, the first two and greatest two. And then, you know, they did a little bit of stuff after that with different people. Minier retooled, the Minier album came out back in the nineties, eighties, nineties. Greg Minier of, uh, Crucified fame did all the singing vocals and everything. He's a guitar player, did this, the vocals and the guitar and everything on this. I actually did all of it. The album came out, was reissued a while back, but the album was never quite totally finished. So in 2022, he went back in and like added bass guitar, which the original didn't have, and did a lot of uh, tweaking to it. So it's retooled. And so then that one did get reissued on CD and vinyl. So we have that great stuff. Millennial Rain, Carry the Fire, uh, the band, where are they from? They're from out there. They're out there somewhere. Somewhere in the U.S., U.S. power metal type band. They have a brand new album that just dropped. Um, the vinyl hasn't come out yet, but the audio, you can pre-order the album. Um, I believe there's an album before this that I did not get the vinyl of, but anyway. They were signed uh, to Alterium Records. Yeah, overseas company, so getting their stuff is not super easy, but you can find it at U.S. retailers. Great stuff. Another reissue from about a year ago, kind of a one-off obscure band, Monstrous, Zealots in the Land of Nod. Um, there was a whole story behind this. I remember back in the day, I was, uh, I think I'm still Facebook friends with the drummer from the band, but uh, this is the 20th anniversary edition, and this was recently reissued on vinyl, so it was just great to see that classic from 20 years ago to reappear on vinyl. All right, these were done a couple years ago, and again, we're going to bring up the same uh, Christian Liljen guy <laughs> before he was in Narnia he did Modest Attraction and Modest Attraction did three albums this is the 30th anniversary uh, reissue that came out about mm, two years ago this album I had never heard before it was reissued this album I did I had this album in the day these are this would have been in the what are these the 90s or so so it was great to get these reissued on you know on the limited run vinyl and then this one i had divine luxury this one was really it kind of was uh put out there as a very much classic rock deep purplish organish type uh classic rock and it's got that sound for sure great stuff and then shortly after this is where christian went on to do narnia all right this one I've only got two two to show because I'm not going to really delve into this. Everybody knows my love for Neil Morse. This is Neil Morse's most recent two albums. He's got the Joseph story retold, parts one and two. He has uh, this is his solo stuff, Neil Morse. It's you know it's very it's got prog elements and stuff. And then he's got the Neil Morse band, which is very much prog. He's got Mike Portnoy on drums and everything. You got that. Then you know so you got his solo stuff and you've got that. This is some of his. Uh, solo stuff of his recent issues, but pretty much everything that Neil Morse does for me is gold. And there you go. So that's just two of his recent ones. Mortal. All right, I mentioned them recently in a in a uh, video. I forget what we're talking about, but one of the early industrial bands. Um, they started off as a lot of like uh, electronic sound effects, movie trick uh, clips. 
I just fell in love with this album. It's got so much great moments. And then they did do they did a second album, which a little more I think felt a little more uh, music driven, a little more guitar driven, a little edgier at times. And they went on to do a handful of albums after this, and they were all various styles. Some of them were very uh, just kind of sound. They weren't as they didn't have all the clips and the stuff in them as much. They were they became kind of just different spacey at times and so i do have a lot of those digitally but those were not on vinyl all right this one we're going to run through this is the near the last of the thing but the band with the absolute most releases we're talking about mortification they have this many albums they are pretty much done steve Rowe, the main guy behind the band i had mentioned in the l video about light force he went on to do mortification and I, I, I forget how long ago it was, but quite a few albums ago and quite a few years ago, he ran through a bout of sickness. Um, what was it leukemia, blood disease? He, he was given like days to live and through the power of prayer and all kinds of uh, stuff that went on at that time, he came out of it and did numerous albums after that. But it's gotten to the point now where he's, he, he is done and has you know a lot of other things the system has started to give in out and stuff and so but he's given us a whole bunch of music and he's one of the early pioneers of grindcore thrash you know following suit with bands like vengeance rising comes mortification with their stuff up first is break the curse 1990 25th anniversary this was reissued obviously quite a few years ago this is the first album that they released that came out on, on on cassette in the early days and actually this is the one i spoke of in back when i in my l section where i spoke of the first album being re released with the light force name this was released as light force and then eventually they reissued it as uh, mortification because it was such a radical change in style from Light Force that the band kind of went off and created something new and then this was reissued on vinyl not too many years ago all right then the first full-length album that came out after that mortification um, this is where it kind of started really getting you know they started really solidifying their sound kind of a grind chord type stuff started coming around one of the heavier bands of the day that went into the whole death metal field, taking it even further than like bands like Vengeance Rising had done. This album actually in the early days was, uh, the Christian bookstores thought that cover was a little too creepy and made the record label release the album with black shrink wrap so you couldn't see it in the store on the shelves with just a logo on it. So I'm not gonna talk about a lot of these. These are so many here. Scrolls of the Megaloth, most people's top album by them. Definitely just straight up grindcore thrash. Live album, great, great stuff they released. One of my favorite albums, Post Momentary Affliction. They got a little more guttural and and, and grindy, slow, and rawr, just guttural. And I, I just really, for some reason, resonated with that album. Then they really radically changed a little bit on Blood World. It became a little more clean, but I mean, it was still heavy, but it was a totally different change of style. Envision Evangeline, again, they changed a little bit there, but it kind of started maintaining kind of a sound, uh, you know, it was all similar. Primitive Rhythm Machine, probably one of my favorites from this era because it was, uh, while it was very heavy, the vocals could be deciphered. They were understandable, and so I really enjoyed that. Triumph of Mercy is the album where he really had gotten sick, and this is a Triumph of Mercy because he actually was able to record the album. This is when he really was, was on the verge of dying and uh, anyway, so this is a celebration of coming overcoming that. Hammer of God, one of my favorites. This is where this is one of the ones that really kind of fell into just a straight up, you know, heavy metal. Didn't have too much of the death influences or too 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 much of the extreme. It was just straight up one of my favorite albums. The Silver Cord is Severed again along the same lines was you know a really good album same with brain cleaner this whole era is probably my favorite era because they were still heavy but they were very uh understandably heavy so i enjoyed it erasing the, go the goblin i was glad to see when they did reissue this album that it, the cover for a lot of the releases was just kind of the, the characters cropped out i don't know why i don't know why they didn't want all that but it was great that they put it out with the original cover Relentless, another one in that era that was just one of my favorites. Just straight up, straightforward metal. Really enjoyed that. The Evil Addicting Destroying Machine. Got some quirky moments on here at times. This album's got some 
Uh, it's a little different, but you know, overall, not too strained too far from their sound. Scribe of the Pentateuch is an EP. They did make it into a full album when they released this. They added some uh, re recorded classics from the year 2000 onto here to make it a full album. But this is one of the EPs that was late. Uh, one of the last few re last few releases with Rome of the Skeletor being the last release by the band. And Steve has, you know, uh, I believe he's still, you know, doing okay, but he's he's had, you know, a lot of other medical issues that he's not able to do any of this uh, recording or anything any longer. So, all right, and that moves us into the last couple bands. Motivic, Death of the Gunman. I think, if I recall, this album was kind of like, yeah, it looks like it's like, one or two musicians um yeah ryan roebuck yeah, i'm facebook friends with him so it's got more or less two guys and then they had some guest people come in and do some stuff including the one of the early singers from sacrament sang on this album they have a new album in the works i've seen pictures it's coming out real real, real soon and i believe it's, it is more of a actual band situation but i'm not 100 percent sure but i really enjoyed this and so when they did reissue this on vinyl i was thrilled because it was originally just like a cd release and then the one band in this whole batch that's kind of in the gray area is motherload motherload is not labeled or marketed as a christian band they are a main a overseas just a mainstream band but on this particular album, Sonny Lars, and he's still with them, I guess, a little or has been in the past 10 years. Sonny Larson uh, is the vocalist and writes the songs on here. And Sonny Larson has done time in Leviticus uh, right around this time. Actually, maybe a little after this time. This is like uh, early 80s, 84, 5, somewhere around there. I've had this album since the 80s. But in his lyrical uh, approach on quite a few songs is blatantly... Of, of, a, of a scriptural Christian, you know, he's coming back, songs like that, Father of Lies, The Sanctuary, um, things like that. There's a lot of, of blatantly Christian sounding lyrics on here, and then some that are just mainstream, regular sounding. So this one Motherload album with him on it has always, in my mind, been just a great classic that is right on in the Christian market. The Downward Spiral by the Moshketeers. Moshketeers, early thrash band, uh, clean type thrash band. Think of bands, you know, just some of the earlier bands like Anthrax and Metallic and stuff. So not into the, you know, extreme, but just straight up thrash of the 90s type style. And they used to be called, the, you know, The Rapture. And then they, you know, Moshketeers was kind of a funny name because of the moshing situation. And they've done a lot of recording. And this is kind of a compilation of the Moshketeers album. I think there's some other songs on here that were uh, from other errors um yeah and so this was just a great little fun reissue that came out quite a few years ago i had heard that maybe there was some more stuff coming out by them maybe on vinyl but i don't know it's been years since any of that's happened um anyway and so yeah that's it that's it that's it for the m's quite a few in the m's we're getting into those errors we're not into those letters where there are more bands that'll be it for this one though let's cut it here i will see you later for ends rock on and rock hard <laughs>